वेलकम बैक फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू अनदर वीडियो लेक्चर फ्रॉम शोमोस बायोलॉजी एंड इन दिस वीडियो ट्यूटोरियल विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट वेस्टर्न ब्लॉटिंग वी बीन टॉकिंग अबाउट डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ ब्लॉटिंग टेक्निक्स लेटली वीव टॉक्ट अबाउट साउदर्न ब्लॉटिंग नॉर्दर्न ब्लॉटिंग एंड दिस टाइम विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द वेस्टर्न ब्लॉटिंग ब्लॉटिंग इज अ टेक्निक ऑफ डिटेक्टिंग मैक्रो मॉलिक्यूल्स इफ यू आर ट्राइंग टू डिटेक्ट डी एन ए वी यूज साउदर्न ब्लॉटिंग इफ यू वॉन्ट टू डिटेक्ट आर एन ए वी यूज नॉर्दर्न ब्लॉटिंग एंड इफ यू वॉन्ट टू डिटेक्ट proteins we use western blotting now northern blotting and southern blotting as very very similar techniques which uses mostly same type of techniques and setup while western blotting is a little different compared to them in western blotting it is very very sensitive reaction technique that can even detect nanograms of protein molecules in the mixture of other proteins now there are different ways of detecting a target protein from a mixture we can use chromatin immunoprecipitation we can use like uh, co immunoprecipitation or antibody mediated pull down assays but in case of this western blotting we detect very minute amount of protein that is present in a cell fraction and a mixture and western blotting is a widely used technique to not only detect a specific protein but also to find out different chemical reaction going on inside the cell as well as to find out the total proteome inside the cell as well as it's very important to understand about the protein protein interactions uh, for different physiological cellular purposes inside the cell so let's look at the whole process in a process of western blotting again in any blotting processes we rely on three different stages the first stage is to extraction and identification of Uh, first is the extraction of the molecule so in this case the molecule is protein so we need to extract the protein content from a cell what we do we simply treat the cell with detergent that will break down the cell membrane so membrane pore will be formed and cytosolic components can come out then we do the spinning of that cell in the centrifuge that is going to give us a supernatant and a pellet the pellet contains all the cellular de debris like cell membrane organelles and all the stuff while all the protein components are suspended it's it's soluble in the uh, in the in the supernatant so take out the supernatant uh, and we have a protein mixture so we start with that point so we have a protein mix that is isolated from a cell and that protein mix contains so many varieties of protein let's say this green one let me draw some of the examples this red one that they have different concentrations as well but they have different uh, varieties of of proteins in there okay so protein mix then what we do the second step of any blotting process is separation of those mixture of molecules in this case we'll do the separation of protein the process of separation of protein that we use is electrophoresis obviously and the electrophoresis that we use to separate protein molecules from each other are known as sds page sodium dodecyl sulfate which is sds polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis known as page so polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis is a process of separating all those protein mixtures from each other now in case of southern and west northern blotting we separated dna and rna molecules uh, with the help of agarose gel electrophoresis but in case of in case of western blotting we separate proteins with page it's a normal process of separating protein molecules in this case the the gel is made with polyacrylamide because acrylamide can attach with each other to do make a cross linking and form a polymer so they are separated based on forming this polymers there okay so they separate based on that so once they separate so so let me draw this whole thing of sds page in one way we put all those known proteins now sds page is a type of electrophoresis process which helps separating proteins based on their charge size and mass mainly by their size and mainly based on their mass and and also shape uh, mostly not size you can say the shape so it's mostly the structural feature that helps separating proteins based on that 
charge uh, the separation of protein based on the charge requires some some more modifications in the SDS page, but mostly they separated by their mass. Now the idea is, as this this is a polyacrylamide gel, it carries so many different pores in between. If the protein is smaller, then that protein can migrate further. But if a protein is large, that protein will not migrate much. That protein will halt at a specific point. So the smaller proteins will migrate further, so will get bands in in a in further directions. While the larger proteins will be lagged behind during the migration. And let's say the migration direction is this. Okay. And again, the directionality of this migration that we are talking about is also towards the positive end because the proteins that we are talking about here they are negatively charged because they treat it with SDS so they are positive negatively charged so they will migrate towards the positive end okay so that is the idea of SDS page so with the help of this SDS page we separate the mixture of proteins based on their mass and charge means uh, we not let's talk about charge here we just talk about the mass and separation so now let's say we separated all the mixture of proteins based on their mass and then what we do we need to use a probe to find out our target protein right that is the idea this is the second step of this blotting process every blotting process consists of three states the first step is extraction and isolation second step is the electrophoresis third step is a probing and before and between the electrophoresis and probing a new in unique process to be done that is the transfer of the content that is present in the gel onto a membrane paper why it's required because you know we want to add probe and that probe can bind to different regions of this gel it should be properly attached to the target protein only right and gel is really really fragile because the content of the gel is not that strong so we cannot do rest of the process of probing and all this reactions using using this gel so we need to transfer the components of the gel exactly like the same imprint into a nitrocellulose membrane or nylon membrane filter for this process of transfer that is the reason we call it as a western blotting that's the term blot comes in because it's simply blotted and simply taking the imprint of the gel replica onto a nitrocellulose membrane so we take the nitrocellulose membrane and we put on top of this gel and then we apply current that will help flowing this protein molecules from the gel towards the membrane and those proteins will be attached to the membrane because this membrane is kind of a uh, like sticky towards those macromolecules okay so let's see how this process is exactly done so let's assume SDS page is conducted now if you don't have any idea about SDS page and if you don't know about the details of SDS page I'll recommend you to watch my video on SDS page there are plenty of videos three or four videos available in my channel regarding SDS page you can watch that anytime but for now let's say the SDS page is done and we have the gel ready then how we transfer this component the way to transfer this component in case of western blotting electroelution that is the process of transferring the component from the SDS gel to the nitrocellulose membrane so what we do let's assume this gel as a as a side view so if you look at this gel as a side view it will look something like this this is the gel we put it in horizontal line and what we do now we also put the nitrocellulose membrane let's say this is the nitrocellulose membrane this is the membrane and this is the gel okay and then what we do is we apply electrodes in both these directions okay so we'll apply positively charged electrodes towards the membrane negatively charged electrodes on this towards the gel side that is the idea that we have okay now what we do once we put the electrodes the current will flow from this negative towards the positive electrode and as the current is flowing from negative to positive the protein molecules that are present here because you know they this this membrane is in direct contact with the gel so let me do, do that it's in direct immediate contact with the gel 
it's an immediate contact. So what's going on? Once we apply the current, the protein molecules will start flowing from the gel to the nylon filter. That is the process. And we also put everything in the buffer. Definitely we need to put them in buffer and electrolyte so that they can flow. So once this process is done, what is the importance of this process? Plotting. That is the transfer of those components and proteins from the SDS page to the nitrocellulose membrane. Because the membrane is much easy to handle. It's more strong and we can, we can use this membrane for other purposes. So once this blotting is done, once the transfer is complete, then we take the membrane, then we take this membrane here, let me take the membrane, let's draw the membrane, this is the membrane and let's say in this membrane we find out uh, some region of proteins, different regions or bands that we can see for example this, this, these are for example, everything is present in the membrane. Now the third important stage that is a probing and hybridization. In case of DNA and RNA blotting we simply use complementary strands for the hybridization assay but in this case hybridization won't work because it's protein. So we need to use any sort of detector that can go and bind to the specific target protein of our interest. For that you know we have antibody. Antibodies can be specific, it can attach to specific proteins. So we design antibody against our target protein and we apply that antibody to go and interact with our target protein among the rest of the proteins in the nitrocellulose membrane. But before doing that, we do another step which is called as a blocking. Blocking is a step where we apply some blocking agent. Example one, uh, of one such blocking is, uh, agent is dry milk. We apply dry milk so that that portion covers most of the area because that will not bind to the protein or targeted protein areas but mostly that will bind to the rest of the nitrocellulose membrane. Why it is important? Because if we don't do the blocking step and simply put the antibody, antibody are specific but antibody still can bind with some unspecific reaction with different regions. Antibody should bind with the protein but along with that it might also bind with some extra other regions of the of the membrane. That will give us some noises, background noises because it will be giving us a positive false uh, positive signal or it's a kind of a background noise. So to reduce this noise we won't allow this antibody to be interacting with the rest of the member membranes region. So that is the region we, we kind of cover the rest of the membrane with all these blocking agents. So with the help of buffer and blocking agents we simply block the rest of the portion of the membrane. And we also use some mild detergent as well. So it's covering rest of the blocking area. Then we apply the primary antibody. And the antibody is very specific and so much specific towards the target protein. It will not allow to any blocking to prevent it. So it is going to bind. For example, say this is the target, this is the target protein. So antibody can bind to the target protein. And even multiple antibodies can bind to one protein content. Okay? That is the first step. And the antibody that we applied for the first time is known as the primary antibody. It's known as primary antibody because this is the first type of antibody that we apply which will directly bind, it will directly bind to the target protein. But primary antibody lacks in specific part that it will not show us the result because it's not a reporter. It can only directly bind to the target but it will not give us any fluorescence or any light or anything of that. It's just for the proper binding. So after binding of the primary antibody we, we do the process of washing out. So the rest of the unbound antibodies are washed away. Then we also add a secondary antibody. Secondary antibody and now this one is important because secondary antibody is acting as a reporter. Because this secondary antibody is anti-primary antibody. That means if this is the primary antibody, 1 degree means primary, 
secondary antibody will be anti primary that means secondary antibody have the capability to bind with the primary antibody fc portions that will be the interaction between primary antibody and secondary will be targeted against primary so it will attach to the primary now secondary is attached with any sort of enzyme that is why it's called as a reporter primary goes and bind to our target protein let's say this is the target protein the green color let's say this is the target protein primary binds to the target protein we apply we do the washing step then we apply secondary antibody secondary antibody is attached to the enzyme it is binding to the primary antibody so we have a proper binding done now here the secondary antibody attached to the enzyme so if after this we add the substrate and the substrate will be converted into product by the attached enzyme that is present there with the secondary antibody FC region. It will be converting the substrate into product. Now the product that we prepare sometimes give us color. So if we do this reaction in, in different, big, uh, in different let's say uh, trays and stuff, we get some color generates in a specific region of this whole membrane. That's going to tell us that that is the region where the target protein is present. Or sometimes the, this, this enzyme or the chemical molecule whatever present there upon giving a specific substrate it will convert it into a product and it will generate light as a byproduct and that is very common in case of the western blotting technique and detection and the enzyme that we use is known as a horse reddish peroxidase HRP horse reddish peroxidase once you use HRP remember HRP here is attached and then we add the luminol it converts the luminol and break it down and as a byproduct of this reaction it, it provides us light and we can so, show the light that is coming out and that can be easily detected with a x-ray film because that, that, that film is completely uh, like uh, dark and the dark you will see those gray faded bands due to the generation of the light that is going to give us the idea about where exactly the target protein is present in that mixture of SDS page. In the, in the picture of the SDS page. So let's say you want to find out that protein and cut it out. You can still do that because if you see where exactly the light is coming from. So when you develop the film, you'll only see only one band. And in this case, let's say the band is kind of here. So then you can simply look at this, this SDS page and you find out the band in the page. So if you want to take that protein out, you can simply go there and cut that portion out and do the rest of the job. So that is the process. You see, 